we say to girls, you can have ambition, but not too much. <laughs> you should aim to be successful, but not too successful. Human Otherwise, rights you will are women's rights, and women's rights are human if rights. If you are not a feminist, male or female, you are looking at the world with one eye open. Just go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the movement from object to like feminist perspective. So we know that in 1963, roughly, we get the feminine mystique. Mm -hmm. Betty Friedan is writing, and that starts this whole conversation about who are women in America specifically. Mm -hmm. Again, it isn't a new conversation. We've been having it since the suffragette movement, so it's not a new conversation, but once women were granted the right to vote, we know it, it, it died down, until there was in 19, late 60s, 1970s, a, a, re, a revising, or excuse me, a sort of reestablishing of it, a renaissance, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it, ha it just coincided with the civil rights movement, basically. The catalyst for the women's movement was the civil rights movement. And so it starts all over again, this conversation. and it. Art is already having a conversation about liberation. Art is having its own conversation. Because what is happening with art is something called, with the beginning of something that we would call, um, it's not really postmodern yet. We don't use that term to the 1980s, but we're starting to see the barriers between art forms, like between performance and visual art breakdown between object and subject breakdown conceptual art. We're starting to see changes, mm -hmm. right? And so that those two things are going to sort of collide in women artists working. They're going to begin to change their own particular focus. And that's going to happen because women are going to begin to think about how is it that I move from being a subject in a particular an, or an object, rather, in a particular form to being the subject of a form. So if we go back as early as Alan Capral, who started The Happenings, Alan Capral was a, a 1960s painter turned conceptual artist, and he began to move conceptual art around by thinking about how you give a viewer an experience and not just a 2D flat experience, but an actual three-dimensional tactile experience. So he did things like fill up a, a, a warehouse with tires and have people walk through, you know. Um, and he called these things happenings, like just bringing in a group of people to experience something and mm -hmm. move through. But women really weren't a part of the happening until they began to think through, well, how am I? He used women a lot as mm -hmm. objects, but beginning to think through how um, why are we sort of on the periphery of this? Why are we not in the, why are we on the margins of this and not in the center of this? Mm -hmm. And so you begin to have women start to think about their roles in this new conceptual art, performance, art mode in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the earliest one that you would know of would be Yoko Ono, who moves from being a conceptual artist to a performance artist with her, her a major piece, cut piece, mm -hmm. where literally she's having clothing cut off of her. And then, of course, there was she and John Lennon doing the bed-ins, mm -hmm. where they would invite people just to spend the day filming them in bed as a protest to the Vietnam War. So we're going to take a day and kind of do nothing. And she was sharply criticized. Um, her, one of her, my favorite books by her is um, um, How to Draw Grapefruit Lessons on Life and or Grapefruit Lessons on Life and Drawing. But mm -hmm. It's like, write your name, change your name, change the spelling of your name as art. Um, look at clouds as art. But that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. It was that movement from art being highbrow aesthetic practice to a urinal is art. Joseph Boys living in a cage with a coyote is art. So what were women going to do then with their bodies if this is what's becoming art? And women's bodies in art representationally mm -hmm. has always been sort of this idealized form. What are we going to do with women's bodies realistically? And what are we going to do with women's lives? Carolee Schneeman. Mm -hmm. And then most people know interior um, scrolls where she pulls 
the um, list of names and out, out of her vagina. Most people know that. Right. But they don't know why or where she where she started before that. Mm -hmm. And that was literally to take herself out of this idea of being an object in someone else's work to become the subject of her work. So the bared breast, the use of the vagina, and all that was not shock value. It was to really begin to have a conversation about how do women's bodies inform space? How do we inform space? How do we shift space? How do we examine women's bodies in particular spatial relationship to objects, to men, to the ideas that art represents itself? How do we begin to do that? So all of these things come into question in terms of making us think about women's bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's really what she was attempting to do. She wasn't just as well as Yoko Ono. They weren't just, it wasn't shock value. Mm -hmm. They were really trying to figure out how do we make a com how do we have a conversation with the body? What is that conversation about? And so we start to look at um, let's come let's jump forward um, about thirty years, and I'm going to talk about a South African photographer, a lesbian photographer, Zanelle Mohale, and she takes photographs of lesbian women who have been the victims of what they call corrective rape in South Africa. She goes to very specific townships and she starts to look at these South African women's bodies in some very uncomfortable positions. Some of them in hospital beds after they've been attacked. Some of them with partners in very um, overt loving positions. Some of them in drag. Some of them menstruating. Wow. All of the above. To make us have a conversation with, to engage these bodies as living beings both in a two-dimensional sense, mm -hmm. but also in a very real, visceral sense. It's that punctum viewing, that, that viewing that pierces our expectation and makes us think about what it is to really be in a moment with someone. So I think when we talk about women in art, we talk about women in photography, when we talk about women, period, we've got to talk about how we have a conversation with women's bodies in the form mm -hmm. and what that conversation has been from the Greeks forward, how the 70s with Judy Chicago, Yoko Ono, Carol Schneeman, um, Marina Ambrovich, um, Karen Finley, mm -hmm. all began to shift that conversation so that we had to start to think about it. Howard Dean and um, we had to start to think about that conversation differently. What do we think about race and women's bodies? Mm -hmm. What are we thinking about when we're having that conversation? So all of these conversations are really about representation and how we engage the body and realism, realistically how we engage the body. So I think that's a large part of what I'm, what I'm interested in in feminism and art is forcing people to come to grips with women's bodies alter spaces. Women's body carry bodies carry narratives that force us to come to grips with how we function within a patriarchal society, even as women sometimes in a sexist mode. Women's bodies force us to begin to think about liberation in very specific kinds of ways that are visceral. And so how do we begin then to use that as a platform to have a larger discussion about humanity in general. I think we can thank feminist artists for really putting the body front and center and saying this is the stage by which you begin to have a conversation about liberation. This is the stage. What color are you? What gender are you? How do your sex organs work? That's the stage. Because this is the tool that we have.